Hello everybody! Today I have something a little bit different than usual on my channel. I'm going to be doing another tutorial, surprise surprise, but this one is going to be for a canine. That's right, we're going to be making a super motion canine tail. Super motion is a concept that isn't entirely mine, but I definitely built the framework up a lot over the years, and it is something that's very signature to how I build these kind of tails. The whole super motion comes from the dynamic movement that's created when wearing these tails. They move using very clever distribution of weight, precise cuts, and just moving your body. Gravity is the primary factor that drives these tails. There's no wires, there's no electronics, there's nothing mechanical at work here. Just simple playing around with physics and gravity. And I'm going to show you exactly how you can make one just like this. So let's go ahead and let's dive directly into this tutorial. Now, before I begin, I do also want to address the pattern that I'm using in this video. This is one of my original patterns, and you can purchase it from artbynefertiti.com slash store, or you can click the link down in the description, which will take you right to the exact webpage so that you can purchase it and follow along with me. You're also welcome to reference what I'm doing and kind of change the shape however you're needed. However, I will state that the shape does affect the functionality of this tail. So do keep that in mind as we continue on with the rest of this project. Okie dokie. So I'm going to be beginning with the top of the tail here. This is kind of like a lizard-esque looking tail shape, and I'm using three inch polyurethane foam. When I'm cutting out this main shape, I'm just going to use my electric carving knife, which I strongly recommend investing in one of these. It has been such a lifesaver on my hands and my wrist trying to cut and carve foam like I'm doing here. Just tapering down these edges so that it's a little less chunky and that it looks a little bit more smooth. I am also going to come in once I get the main pieces off here and use my scissors to clean up any more rough edges and make sure that it is as symmetrical as possible. Once I get that all cleaned up, I'm going to trace the base of the tail onto a scrap piece of EVA foam. This is also just like a basic floor mat. And I'm also going to cut out a little itty bitty almost a rectangular shape here and I'll explain what that's for in a little bit. I'm going to roughly cut out the shape using my electric knife just to save time, cut out that little rectangular piece, and then smooth out this little rounded one here so that it's nice and smooth and oval shaped. Now you're going to take your scissors near the very top of the tail, not all the way at the top, I want to say like about an inch or so below it, and cut all the way through with your scissors whatever the width of your belt. I'm then going to insert that little rectangular piece in there and glue down the front part of it before attaching the base of that round circle to the base of the tail. The whole purpose of this is to stabilize the belt so that when it sits on our body it doesn't deform, the shape doesn't flop over, and it helps it hold the rigidity of the shape as you're wagging this tail since it's going to have lots of motion. One of the key elements to making the motion are these little cuts that are weakening the foam. Now you do want to be very strategic with these and not cut all the way through the foam, just enough that you get a little bit of a wiggle. Remember that when you put the fur on top of this, it is going to reduce a lot of the movement and weaken the structure because it's going to get more weight. So make sure as you're doing that, you're being very careful and not cutting through the foam all the way. Next, I'm going to take the colors of fur. In this case, it was a really simple tail with just two colors, no crazy markings or anything. So I have this beautiful charcoal gray that I picked up from HowlFabrics.com. Strongly recommend their furs, they are absolutely amazing. And this particular one was a really pretty shiny color and it just, it bounces and moves and it came in a long shag. So it was a win-win-win in every front. I'm very carefully cutting through only the backing of my fur, making sure that I preserve the long fur on the edges before rolling up any scraps and putting them back away in my fur storage because you can never have too much fur storage. <laughs> I'm also then going to brush through each one of my pieces and just kind of clean up any loose fibers that may be on them. Bearing in mind here that the fur direction will be marked on the pattern, but you always want it to be pointing towards the tip of the tail. This really bizarrely looking backing on this fur is because this particular fur is Howl Fabrics Monster Fur. I intentionally selected this because it has a three and a half to four inch pile, which is crazy. 
crazy long compared to the regular size of fur piles. And I really wanted that extra wave and bounce on the end of this tail. And this particular color happened to fit the client's need. So it was a win-win and I absolutely loved it. I think I've said win-win too many times. Even with the scripting in this video, it still gets difficult after a while to keep up with everything. <laughs> Roll up all the fur so it's out of the way. And then continue cleaning up each one of the pieces, making sure you're cutting at an angle so that you don't slice individual little fur fibers. You want to maintain and preserve that edge so that the fluff remains nice and long. I'm then going to brush my carpet and then brush the fur to collect any loose fibers because I hate it when loose fibers get in my way when I'm trying to sew everything together. Using my slicker brush to do this just kind of helps the process along and removes any loose flyaways so that I don't have to deal with them. With all these pieces now cut out, I can go ahead and start pinning them together, making sure I'm lining up the edges, pinching them, and lining up everything as I go and use these little super clips that I got off Amazon. Now, I get a lot of people that ask me, where do I get my materials? Where do I get my tools? They are always linked in the description of each video. So if you're ever curious, you can just go down to the description. There's a bunch of links and lists of materials that you can go find them on your own. I'm now going to be using the zigzag stitch on my sewing machine here because I'm getting far braver with using my sewing machine to do a lot of my work, which is a good and a bad thing, as I said in my DigiGrade foot tutorial, because I know at some point I'm going to screw up and I'm going to have to spend hours ripping stitches, but until that day comes, I will keep working at it. I really like using the zipper foot right now and the zigzag stitch because I can get really, really close to my seam edge here. And that means I don't have to struggle and fight with lining up individual edges, cutting off the seam allowance. I can just cut the seam allowance perfectly. At this point now, I'm going to just trim off that little itty bit that was sticking out, line up the two pieces, fold all the fur inside, and then pin all along the edge to make sure that everything gets lined up so that I can sew the two halves together. those two halves pinned, I'm going to run them through my machine as well, using the zigzag stitch once again, and just slowly work my way all the way down the whole piece. Now, when it comes to sewing things like these, I do find that you want to make sure that you're just letting the machine pull the material through. Don't force it through. Let it go on its own pace, and when you get to areas like this one here where I'm crossing over a seam, I always kind of double back on it just to make absolutely sure that that seam is crossed over and that it's not going to pop open or that I didn't miss a stitch and have to come back in and sew back over that area. Just, like I said, take your time with it. Let the machine pull the material through. The only thing I'm doing is just guiding the material. You don't want to force it. Otherwise, you're going to end up with really weird warps and wrinkles that are going to be almost impossible to get out of your material. And trust me when I say... It sucks to have to rip up a bunch of stitches just to fix a simple warp in your material. Once both halves are fully sewn together, it's now time to turn this inside out. I find it's helpful to start with the tip of the tail and turn it inside out along this path here. Sort of like how you would turn a sock inside out. Once you get your hand through the tip there, you can make sure you push all the pieces out and fluff it up. Now we're going to take that foam core that we made and gently wiggle it into position. If you've made it correctly, it should perfectly line up with the entire top portion of the tail. Make sure that it goes all the way down to the tip and that everything is lined up nice and snugly. Now for a little bit of added swoosh and weight, I'm going to very, very lightly stuff the remaining area of the tail with some polyfill. 
give it a quick brush down just to make sure there's no loose fibers anywhere and that everything's going the right direction. And then you can give it a small little wiggle test to see if there's any areas that you need to fluff out. In my case, I didn't need to, so I could move on to the next step, which is going to be doing the end cap or the little gore cutaway detail. I will be making a separate video for this particular detail in the future when I have a much larger one to work on because this one was very teeny, teeny, tiny and it makes it very difficult to get the details into it. But I think you'll get the gist of it by watching what I'm doing. I peel back the fur from the tail so that way I can get a good grip on it without having to worry about, you know, drawing on the fur by accident. And cut this little circle out here that I'm then going to transfer onto whatever flesh color I want for the tail. In this particular case, it was this really pretty deep maroon color, roughly cut around the area. And I'm also going to be doing a hidden belt loop here. So I'm using a fleece that almost too perfectly matched the color of the fur that I used and just cut out a rectangle long enough to be able to fit through the tail snugly and not have any crazy amounts of overhang. Sewed along the two halves there and then proceeded to sew all along the outside edge of this little end cap piece. But there is quite a few more details we're gonna do with that. So I kind of roughly sketch what I want them to look like on the back of the material. In this case, it's just basic flesh tone. I have this deeper magenta that I'm going to use for the lighter portions of the flesh. Do a straight stitch all the way along the edge and just slowly work your way along it. Once these pieces are done, you can see that the little shapes are revealed, but now we have to actually let them out of the material. Snip off any loose threads, and then using your scissors, cut very, very close to the edge that you've sewn on. If you're careful when you're doing this, you should be able to cut cleanly along the edge and then reveal that beautiful, fantastic little detail. Because this was so teeny tiny, I decided to do it like that, where I take one large chunk and just kind of sew around my sketch lines. Normally on my larger tails, I prefer to do this by cutting out each piece individually and just very carefully straight stitching them down because it wastes less material. But because of the teeny tiny nature of this one, I really wanted to make sure nothing shifted out of position. So I went ahead and just did these large chunks and decided that the excess would just become scrap for stuffing things. Once you do finish with the initial stitch down, there's one additional detail you can do that's totally optional, but I find it makes a big difference. On my brother machine, I use the straight zigzag stitch with the stitch length set to 0.6 and the depth set to 4.0. Now what this does is it creates a kind of stitch known as a satin stitch. This is a really, really cool effect. And if you take your time with it, this footage is sped up. I took very long time to sew this portion. It makes this really clean, crispy edge that just looks nice. Once all the pieces are sewn together, you can see I actually did end up going back and I sat and stitched around the magenta with a deep red material just because I wanted it to pop a little bit better. And we have this little hidden belt loop that we're now going to install. I do plan to make a full tutorial on specifically installing these little hidden belt loops, but it is a bit of a tedious process, so I'm going to save that for a future video. I do insert the belt that I intend to use just as like a placeholder so that I can make sure everything lines up properly. Kind of stick the belt in there, cut off any excess, snip a little hole for the belt to go through, and then snug everything into position where it's going to be permanently. You can also see that this is where the belt needs to be positioned in order for these tails to be functional. At which point I'm going to still keep the belt in, even though it is removable. The belt is just gonna stay in here right now so that there's no weird distortion as I am doing the baseball stitch all the way along the edges of this tail. Slowly but surely work your way around. I find the upholstery needle works phenomenally well here. Definitely recommend getting used to using one. I remember years ago before I started using them, I was like, oh, that's a weird needle. It looks bent and broken. Why would anybody want a needle like that? And then I realized how insanely useful they are for tight areas like this. And it was like, oh, I wish I had learned this years ago. It would have saved me so much pain and struggling if I'd done it then. 
You can kind of brush out the seams to make sure all the fur lays nice and flat, and then repeat this with the other side. Here's the finished belt, and you can see, just by looking at it, that it's almost invisible until you pull that fur back. This is exactly what I wanted it to look like. And to prove that the belt is in fact all the way through hidden, you can run your finger through and make sure that everything still looks clean and lines up. You can fluff up the fur around it and fold it over. It's really a neat technique and it just makes it so that if somebody wants to hold their tail and just cuddle it or use it as a pillow and not have a big old clunky belt in the way, but still enjoy the functionality of a super motion tail, they can do that. Now I'm going to finally attach the end cap piece. Simply line it up with where it needs to be, making sure that the little spine bit is along the top. Temporarily pin it in place, and then get a really awkward camera angle as I use the baseball stitch to sew all the way around the rim of this piece. This tail was fairly small compared to some of my bigger ones that I've had to do, but whenever I have to do big base tails or big like floor dragger bases where I apply this gore detail, the tail is so awkward to hang on to. <laughs> I have tried so many times to get a good camera angle on how to hold it and film at the same time, but there's just, there's no easy way to do it unless I had like a GoPro mounted to my forehead and I'm sure that would just look absolutely ridiculous, so. Instead, enjoy knee cam and just watching me flip this thing over and find different creative ways to pin it down and hold it as I sew each portion. It's definitely good at this point to make sure you're taking your time with this because the care more careful you are, the better the end result will look. Keep your stitches very consistent and close together and don't have any weird gaps if you can help it because that will make a difference in the end in both the strength and stability in this, as well as just the aesthetic appearance and making sure that it looks nice and clean and finished and it doesn't look like a weird tacky craft project if that makes any sense comparison wise. I also had just enough thread on my needle to be able to finish this off without having to cut another piece, which is just, oh, that's the sweet bliss. Once it's all sewn on, there is one final step I need to do just to clean up this tail a little bit, and that's along the top portion of the spine. I'm going to shave down the fur a little bit just to make that shape come out a little bit better and make the whole thing look a little bit more clean. This is totally optional, but I've done it on tails where I didn't do it, and tails where I did do it, and it just looks so much better if you just barely shave down a little bit of the top spine. I noticed that you don't get like the angry scruff along the top of the tail when you're wagging it around a lot, which just looks better in the long run, so definitely something that I'd recommend. And here's the finished product! Now the coolest thing about super motion tails is that there's no wires involved. You just watch the construction. There's no wires, there's no electronics, there's no crazy work going on here. It's literally just foam with a little bit of weight distribution on a belt and it uses gravity to be able to bounce around and swing. You can just gently move your hips, but the more you accent your waist and the more you move around, the more aggressive the tail wags will be. You can do this to have fun walking around and of course, just walking generally motivates the tail to move in directions as well. Walking forward, it kind of has a natural sway behind you. And of course, people walking behind you get to see the tail just moving very naturally as well. It just looks like an extension of your body. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that you learned something cool from it. I wanted to keep it relatively short because I do have a couple more things planned in the future and I do want to go on like a full in-depth breakdown explanation with sciency math and stuff to explain the whole concept of super motion tails and how they work when I go to do another big one. So that will probably come sometime in the future because that's going to be a long video. But I feel these little snippets and tidbits are much easier and much quicker to put out so 
there's something that'll tide you over as like a little tidbit until I can do the big explanation videos. And of course, I've had great demand for people asking me how I do tales like this, so here you go. Here's the tutorial for you. I do have another one coming in a couple days, hopefully, that will be showing you how I made the mohawk on Salus the Sergal's refurb, because it was super cool, and thankfully I recorded the process, which is like awesome. I do want to do a full tutorial on hair wefting, but there's a couple important things I want to talk about because I'm obviously not the first person to have done this. And there's a few channels that I want to mention and techniques that I want to, you know, put acknowledgement for who I learned them from. But we'll cross that bridge when we get there. I've got a lot of things planned in the coming future and I, I'm really looking forward to being able to share more techniques and stuff. So you can look forward to new tutorials coming in the near future. I'm going to really, really, really try my best to put out a tutorial at least once every other week, but it may end up being once every two weeks. I don't know, it, it depends how long it takes me to make things. So we'll get there. I'm working on the Digigrade padding tutorial as well. So just bear with me, <laughs> we'll get there together. We just gotta hang on a little bit longer. Alrighty, I'm not gonna do a patron screen or anything on this tutorial since it was just super teeny teeny tiny. But if you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like, leave any suggestions for future tutorials you'd like to see or just techniques that you're maybe interested in that you think I would do a good job explaining. And I will always read through all the comments. I know I don't respond to all of them, but I try my very best to at least like all of them so that you know I've seen it. But I do read every single comment. So, Thank you very much for watching, and as always, I hope you have an absolutely wonderful day and a fantastic life. Bro, Cheeto, I just brushed there. I need to put the fur down.